Hello everyone, we're here today with another story time with the tale of two bed mice by Beatrix Potter. The tale of two bad mice. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful doll's house. It was red brick with white windows and it had real muslin curtains and a front door and a chimney. It belonged to two dolls called Lucinda and Jane. At least it belonged to Lucinda, but she never ordered meals. Jane was the cook, but she never did any cooking because the dinner had been bought ready-made in a box full of shavings. There were two red lobsters and a ham and a fish, a pudding, and some pears and oranges. They would not come off the plates, but they were extremely beautiful. One morning, Lucinda and Jane had gone out for a drive in the doll's permabulator. There was no one in the nursery, and it was very quiet. Presently, there was a little scuffling, scratching noise in a corner near the fireplace, where there was a hole under the skirting board. Tom Thumb put up his head for a moment and then popped it in again. Tom Thumb was a mouse. A minute afterwards, <coughs> I say hunka munka, <laughs> his wife put her head out too. And when she saw that there was no one in the nursery, she ventured out on the oilcloth under the coal box. The doll's house stood at the other side of the fireplace. Tom Thumb and hunka munka went cautiously across the hearth rug. They pushed the front door. It was not fast. Probably Hunsa Moonsa or something like that, but I like Hunka Munka. Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka went upstairs and peeped into the dining room. Then they squeaked with joy. Such a lovely dinner was laid out upon the table. There were tin spoons and lead knives and forks and two dolly chairs, all so convenient. <clears throat> Tom Thumb set out to work at once to carve the ham. It was a beautiful shiny yellow streaked with red. The knife crumpled up and hurt him. He put his finger in his mouth. Ouch! It is not boiled enough. It is hard. You haven't tried, Hunka Munka. Hunka Munka stood up in her chair and chopped at the ham with another lead knife. It's as hard as the hams of the cheesemongers, said Hunka Munka. The ham broke off the plate with a jerk and rolled under the table. Let it alone, said Tom Thumb. Give me some fish, Hunka Munka. Hunka Munka tried every tin spoon in turn. The fish was glued to the dish. Then Tom Thumb lost his temper. Ay, 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 ay. He put the ham in the middle of the floor and hit it with the tongs and with a shovel. Bang, bang, smash, smash. The ham flew all into pieces for underneath that shiny paint. It was made of nothing but plaster. Okay. Then there was no end to the rage and disappointment of Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka. They broke up the pudding, the lobsters, the pears, the oranges, as the fish would not come off the plate. They put it into the red-hot crinkly paper fire in the kitchen, but it would not burn either. Tom Thumb went up to the kitchen chimney and looked out at the top. There was no suit. Curiouser and curiouser. While Tom Thumb was up the chimney, Hunka Munka had another disappointment. She found some tiny canisters upon the dresser labeled rice, coffee, sago. But when she turned them upside down, there was nothing inside except red and blue beads. You can have it. Just turn it down low. Then those mice set to work to do all the mischief they could, especially Tom Thumb. He took Jane's clothes out of the chest and drawers in her bedroom, and he threw them out the top of the window. But Hunka Munka had a frugal mind. After pulling half the feathers out of Lucinda's bolster, she remembered that she herself was in the want of a feather bed. Wouldn't anyone want a nice, comfy feather bed, right? With Tom Thumb's assistance, she carried the bolster downstairs and across the hearth rug. It was difficult to squeeze the bolster into the mouse hole, but they man managed it somehow. Then Hunka Munka went back and fetched a chair at a bookcase, a birdcage and several small odds and ends. Shh! The bookcase and the birdcage refused to go into the mouse hole. Can you give us something to play with, please? Hunka Munka left them behind the coal box and went to fetch a cradle. 
Sounds like they had a baby of their own. Just like these guys. Hanka Manka was just returning with another chair when suddenly there was a noise of talking outside upon the landing. The mice rushed back to their hole and the dolls came into the nursery. Here they come. Here and here comes the big baby. <laughs> Kathy has. Oh boy. What a sight met the eyes of Jane and Lucinda. Lucinda sat upon the upset kitchen stove and stared, and Jane leaned across the kitchen dresser and smiled, but neither of them made any remark. Oh, no! And here comes the big baby, crashing the tea party. The bookcase and the birdcage were rescued from under the coal box, but Hunka Munka has got the cradle and some of Lucinda's clothes. Look at that adorable little baby mouse. Was she going to have some tea? Yum. She also had some useful pots and pans and several other things. The little girl that the doll's house belonged to said, I will get a doll dressed like a policeman. They're going to find out who crashed the doll house. But the nurse said, I will set a mouse trap. Oh, that's not so good for the mice. Kathy, I don't throw them. So that is the story of the two bad mice. But they were not so very, very naughty after all. Because <clears throat> Tom Thumb paid for everything he broke. He found a crooked sixpence under the hearth rug. And upon Christmas Eve, he and Hunka Munka stuffed it into the one of the stockings of Lucinda and Jane. Now those are two little sweet mice, aren't they? Fixing everything that they broke. And very early, every morning before anybody is awake, um, Hunka Munka comes with her dustpan and her broom to sweep the dolly's house. The end. Everybody have a good day. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the story.